this video we're going to teach you the process of removing windows, doors, and interior skins when salvage mining. We'll be using the hotel we tore down in El Campo, Texas for our examples, but remember, when removing materials from older structures, the process usually remains the same across the board. Brad Cattell and Tim Ald will be taking you through the steps. So now that I've showed you the leveraging tools used for taking off doors and windows, the, the trim and the doors themselves, uh, we're going we're gonna to see it in action. So what I'm going to do first is we're going to take off the hardware using a drill with a flathead tip on it. Um, it's easier to take these, these pieces off before you take the trim off. So easy that was? <laughs> Sometimes you can't do it with the drill, you have to do it instead with a screwdriver or a hand screwdriver because the, the, the drill may torque it too much or pull it too hard. Save these. These little pieces right here, they're called the keepers. These keepers retail in an architectural store for about $5 a piece to $7 a piece. The other side is no good without it. So you always want to save these. And they're all different sizes, so just hitting one doesn't always work. That's a really important piece, believe it or not, for so little. Right? And the, problem, the reason I'm bringing it up is salvage miners generally don't take these. And you end up with that other side, which has the, the box on it, and it's like, oh my goodness, why would you do that? Why would you want to take half of something and you can't make one of these to replace it? So, keep that in mind. So now that we've gonna, taken all the hardware off, what we're going to do is we're going to... Brad's going to be on the, on the outside, beating through the, where the jam and the wall, the 2x4s are. He's going to come in with the crowbar while I'm leveraging here. And we're going to take this outside... Uh, nail line out of the trim that's fastening it to the wall and we're going to be able to pull this jam out as a whole with the door attached. The reason doing that is it's, it's cheaper and easier to do that um, now keeping it all together and intact versus having to spend all that extra labor to make it happen in the shop and you're wanting to reuse the, the system. Now you always have to base your decision to do that on the quality of the door and the jam and everything. Um, in this particular instance, this is not one of our better examples that we want to use, but we're going to go ahead and take it out just to show you, and then we'll show you why it wasn't one of the better examples to use as well. But it'll give you a demonstration of how to remove it, and then to understand the difference. Go for it, Tim. That was as a demonstration of why we didn't really want to take this one out and save it normally. This has actually a very small hinge on it. When he shows you a little more detail of it, you'll see that there's just a tiny three inch hinge and a shallow one at that. It's actually in the trim and not in the jam. So what that does is it makes it a weaker joint and uh, in this case of course you saw we can pull it out without even removing the screws. But as we went along, if it starts to fall apart on you, it's not worth saving. Just save the wood. So he can proceed now with taking out the trim. He'll go a lot faster this way. You about ready? Yeah. Pull this one off all the way. You want to pull it off all the way? Just pull it out. So. side to hold the door shut. In this particular instance the door was only an inch and a quarter thick so it barely even got back into the jam and a screw through here wouldn't have held it. So what we'll do is we're going to remove the door stop on this particular piece because this is worth about 50 cents a linear foot. So we'll save that. There's uh, 21 feet generally or say 15 feet of that. So right there alone you're going to make this, this little piece right here with the boards on the side and the, the stop you're looking at about $30 worth of wood, maybe $40 worth of wood if you bought it retail, as long as pine. Didn't take long to get that, did it? And the door, by the way, sell for probably $100. So the time it took us right here, that was $150 retail value. Didn't take very much. Now we're going to show the women how to make that. <laughs> Brian, my question is, I know in new construction there's a header across of the top of a door for support of the ceiling and roof or whatever's above. Is old construction the same way? Is, I mean, is it safe to pull that out with knowing that there's enough yeah, support in the structure? Normally you have to look at each one to check it out for sure because all, all houses are different. This house is very unusual in several regards. The interior walls over here are just single wall construction, inch and a quarter thick, uh, tongue and groove. And here we actually have studs. 
You're right, they don't have headers in most of the old ones, but what's unusual about this, what we have above us right here is a 4x4 running across on top for a top plate instead of a regular 2x4. This house is unusual in a number of ways because of its age. Normally, we would have tall ceilings. This wow. is the lowest ceiling. This is like seven and a half feet, which is rare for an old house. Okay, but it was made of conserving wood. They managed to get two stories in about 14 and a half, uh, 15 feet, as opposed to typical houses in that time, it took 20 feet to 24 feet to do two stories. So that's a, the savings of almost 25% in the wood. So there's a reason for that. The wood that they used in these old houses, amongst other things, is, is so strong because it's long leaf pine and so durable that they were able to stand one by 12s up and make walls. So when they did something like this and they took a two by and stood it up, these would be typically two by fours. And then by the windows, in a lot of cases, they'll run four by fours. Really? Yeah. Now the house we just took down in uh, um, McQueenie was like that. Four by fours are on every door and window on the sides and then two by fours and everything in the middle. So in this case, the structure is actually a four by four running all the way across that does act as a header. And then down below us, we're going to find that we have a similar element going on uh, with a, a, not a header per se. And you didn't typically have headers like you, like you pointed out in the old days. What we do have typically is just boards going straight up the sides and something nailed across as a stabilizer. And then they go right on up again. There's no load carried over the doors or anything. Wow. Uh, the construction, basically I would say the biggest reason construction techniques changed is because the materials um, kept going um, downhill in quality and so, so it takes had, more and more lumber to make it work. Uh, the beauty of the old stuff is literally you can stand up, as we'll see when we do these hallways, you can stand boards up like this vertically and they will stand for a hundred years. Um, the whole exterior of the house is done that way, it's just boards stood up vertically. But ours in this case has two walls. A lot of these houses when they're built that way, I own one in Austin like that, it's literally just one by twelves and then the windows are in there and wallpaper. <laughs> and that is extending your house and it's been standing for 120 right. years so man that right. is something and it has a rot that's the other thing no bugs of eating exactly. or anything else and so that's a good question the structural is always a factor when you're taking them down you have to look at each one differently because in some cases if you start removing doors uh, the walls and stuff will actually lose some of their strength only because you'll have so little holding that wall together huh. but no not a big issue on this one this is probably the best room in the house as far as the amount of space that you get. Effectively what we've done here is we have the dining room underneath us and then we have what would be the kitchen over here. This gives us another great example of something beautiful wood. Nowadays this has come very much back into fashion. Um, this is a turquoisey green, a little bit different than the other greens we got. Um, once sanded or exposed to the sun a long time it tends to turn toward this other green over here, which is a little bit lighter, and then you can see exposure when it's been hit with the rain. I love this effect the best. This is called a zebra effect. And uh, by sanding this old milk paint, it sticks to the soft tissue and comes off the hard growth rings, and it gives you a really nice zebra effect. So this wall could be literally put back up and sanded, and you have this gorgeous zebras all over the place, showing the grain off. And the same as on the doors. Here's another great example. Ooh, there's a soft spot. We've got to watch for this. Beautiful again. You can see how just even rubbing it with my hand. All milk paint is is it's made out of milk protein and um, they actually add clays for the pigments. And so when you wet it, you just add water and mix it up and you put it on the, on the wood and it soaks in the pigment. Instead of going on the surface like our modern clay paints, I mean our modern uh, latexes and stuff, um, this actually um, gets absorbed into the wood. Um, I, I personally love milk paint as a, as a medium. Oh, you have some burl pine in here. This is going to be a gorgeous panel. You can see all the grain in there hidden away, and that comes out then when it's sanded. But some of these doors will be incredible. Ultimately, this room alone will probably produce the interior for two houses. That's pretty good. Literally two tiny houses worth of interiors out of one room and the complete floors for two houses as well. So now we're on the interior skin phase and what we're going to do here is, is knock out the first steps before we can actually take all the interior skin off. What we've got to do is we've already removed all the interior doors and some of the exterior. Now we're going to do some windows. We're going to 
We're not going to salvage these windows as a whole unit like what we can with windows that are in better shape. What we're going to do is we're going to take the window stop out first, take the window sashes out, set them to the side so the existing glass doesn't get broken, and then we're going to come and we're going to pry all the window trim off and then take the jam out and just punch it out from the, from the inside out. What that's going to do is it's going to allow us to then get to the ends of the interior skin. And from there it's just fun and game and, and starting at the top and working your way down. And also when we go to do this, we've got to make sure that we're looking at, a, at the way that the interior skin overlaps each other. Um, you can see that this board runs underneath the end of this wall. And on the same side, we're lucky on this one, um, this interior wall runs underneath this one. So we'll be able to take all of, the, all of this wall off first, which is going to expose the corners of these two side walls and we'll be able to go this way with it and uh, take this whole room. Ceiling is within reach this time so that'll be uh, really fun not having to move ladders around. We'll be able to really get in here and get this down quickly. So Virgil if you want to come and uh, demonstrate for me you know taking off um, this window stop and this this bar too works well to get under there yeah and you can almost pry this stuff off with just with the, the bar itself. Trying to save the materials too. I'm trying to save the materials. Oh, on these. Yes. yes. And we can reuse this window stop and all the trim um, for all all rebuilding, even though we're taking it apart in pieces. The things that we look for when we're taking these these windows apart that aren't in good enough shape to use as is is going to be. A lot of times you see. Um, water rot on the stool of the window here. So a lot of times you can use the legs and the top of the jam, but you can't reuse the stool. You've got to rebuild it. And so there's a few, a few things that affect that, and we'll go into a bit more detail a little bit later when we've got one of these pulled out. Want to explain the process? So, so what he's doing is taking out the stop now. Um, you've got two pieces of stop on the sides and then one that's on the top. The top stop doesn't really do anything functional, it just adds aesthetically, makes it seamless. Um, and what this does is this stop holds these windows from coming out. You see now that he's got that one out, this window wants to just fold right out to the inside. Once he takes that one off, we're going to be able to pull these sashes out. And you can see from the first one to the second one, it just takes a little bit of finesse and you, you develop a technique that allows you to use the tools and, and become very efficient. So this one pulls out. That's this one here, if you look, it might be nailed. Oh, I see. Pull out those pins. These pins right here too. Those pull out to the inside, hold the window when you do it. It should be with your hand, right? Yeah, if they're not too rusted. Oh, my dog. made a, a nest there. Is it budging at all? here on this on some of these windows this top sash was blocked to not be uh, able to move so you can see right here where this wood actually sits underneath the sash and sometimes you see these jerry rigged with just short blocks nailed under when they didn't want the the top sash to be functional anymore and reason being is when you had these functional both of them 
a lot of times you would have these top sashes start drooping a little bit and you'd get a little half inch gap where in the winter time you'd get a lot of air coming in. Uh, so this was the way to, to keep that from happening. hidden nails some hidden nails that uh, we're keeping that sash from coming out so so what we're getting ready to do here is use our three and a half inch uh, floor tool or wall tool and what we're going to use it for is the half inch beadboard this time um, we showed this in action earlier we've got the uh, two pieces of angle iron welded together with the shaft and a handle on it and this groove is cut out to go in this application around the uh, wall stud and so I'm going to hand this off to Virgil, and he's going to show you the tool in use. This is first day using it, and you'll see how efficient he becomes. And what we're going to do is, um, before we started this, I went ahead and I went all the way to the top of this wall, and I found a, I found a, a bad section of board, and it was all short, so I had minimal wastage of long, long material. And I went ahead and just um, ripped those out if, whatever way I could, and that gives us a starting point to, to bring this tool into action. So Virgil's going to give it a go here, and we're going to start at one end and work all the way across with this solid piece. And, and what he's going to do is he'll go through, and uh, he'll go little by little wedging and uh, slowly pry the, the, the top nail out, and then he'll come back through and finish it off. Because you don't want to torque these too much, or you'll start splitting and twisting the boards, and then they can't be used. Go ahead and go to the next one. And you can get all the way up against that end too with this tool. Now you can work backwards and come back through. So you can see this is just one person using this tool. If we've got two guys or three guys on one wall and they each have one of these tools, these boards come down very quickly and you can uh, become very efficient taking a room you know this size being about 12 by 25 or so you can get it down in a matter of an hour hour and a half um, with a three four man crew having walls done simultaneously You can even come by with the tool a little more and uh, almost guide it down. And there it is. There's the first one. Those long runs with one person, uh, they take a little more time, but when you get on the sides of these windows like this, one person can manage these boards quite, quite effectively. Um, in a matter of maybe three paces to the left and right, maybe once down and once back and they're off.